Today's guest on the Edge of Adventure podcast came to the point in her life when the big city routine just wasn't enough anymore. She felt the calling to go home to Africa, and she did so in grand fashion, driving all the way from Europe to Zimbabwe, and she documented her trip along the way. But now that she's back home, she's giving back by helping to open doors for young women and girls to pursue their education where circumstances and realities had closed them. So join me now as we welcome Dot Becker all the way from Africa, where she has founded an organization called Kusasa, helping to give young women in Zimbabwe the opportunity to excel. We get to know her next right here on the Edge of Adventure podcast. So let's welcome now Dot Becker from Kusasa. Dot, great to see you again. Great to have you back on the show. Lovely to see you again, Adam. Thank you for inviting me back. You know, you're one of my favorite guests. You have an amazing laugh. You have a great personality. So talking to you, doesn't matter what we're talking about. It's always a joy. <laughs> Thank you. You made me blush. <laughs> well, listen, the last time we were on the, you, you were on the show. You made me blush for a change instead of me making you blush. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. That's smart. Um, you know, we, uh, last time we talked, we, we focused on the excursion that you had, that adventure of a lifetime yeah. where you traveled home you uh, the name of your platform is going home to africa and it was about your your trip so you're joining us today from zimbabwe and real quick give us a, a very brief overview of what that trip was like we're going to refer everybody to the other interview so they can hear the details but just to put into yeah. perspective the kind of adventurer you are dot what was that trip like by car um, in your blue van yes so I, I did the, the journey in a 20-year-old Ford Transit two-wheel drive, and I drove 20,000 kilometers through 18 West African countries um, over eight and a half months, and I did it on my own. <laughs> and it was amazing. I, I, it, it, was, it was very difficult. Um, it was uh, quite punishing. But I had the time of my life. And um, and I, I I just wanted to I wanted I wanted to learn more about my continent and I absolutely achieved that and um, I yeah I'm delighted that I did it I, I sometimes sometimes I'm, I'm as you know I'm, I'm finishing off my book at the moment and sometimes I'm reading stuff and I'm like wow that was that was pretty incredible <laughs> so yeah it was a great trip and and I I'm I'm happy to be in Zimbabwe I've been here a year now. And um, it's certainly not easy. Uh, we have a very difficult economic, uh, com impacted by COVID as well. But even so, we have a very difficult e economic situation and political. Um, but my, my work and my mission here is to do whatever I can to improve the lives of people with the knowledge and experience that I've gained over the years that I wasn't living in the country. And we're going to talk more about that passion and that vision that you have for the organization that you founded and that you run called Kusasa. We're going to talk more about that. But again, I think it's important if people didn't watch the other, view, uh, other interview, if they don't really know you yet, it's just important for them to understand a little bit about your history. You were born and raised there in Africa. Yes, I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. Um, it was then Southern Rhodesia, and then it became Rhodesia, and then it became Zimbabwe Rhodesia, and eventually it became Zimbabwe. And uh, I left Zimbabwe uh, 38 years, well, in 1981, um, just after in, a year after independence. Uh, there was quite a lot of trouble here, and my first husband um, decided that he we, we were going to South Africa, and that's what we did. So, But I have lived in... Um, Altogether, I lived in six countries on two continents. So I've lived in, um, obviously, Zimbabwe, um, but I've also lived in South Africa, in the UK, Portugal, Spain, Luxembourg, um, over the last 38, 38 years. The 38 years that I was away, um, I've lived in lots of places, learned lots of things, had good times and bad times, as everybody does, but I, I am happy to be home because for the first time in a very, very long time, 
I know that I belong here. So, yeah. So as someone who grew up in Africa, Africa is really home, hence the name of your other platform called Going Home yeah. to Africa. You, um, It was a beautiful story and you shared it again. I'm going to refer everybody to the other interview because it's um, uh, inspiring just to learn Thank more you. about your trip and your travels and this love for Africa and the people of Africa that you have and the fact oh, that yeah, it is totally. really it is home. It is who you are. And therefore your, your return was, was a big decision and an important decision. And today's interview, what we really want to talk about is to get to know this organization that you founded and that you run, yeah. that is yeah. a part of your passion and your love for Africa. And the name of the organization, I like to say it right, is Kusasa. Exactly right. Okay. <laughs> Tell us. Not that, what, not that difficult. <laughs> it's not. It honestly, that's good. I like it. And um, what? Uh, tell us about that. This is this is an investment that that you've made of of your time and your energy and your resources into the young women and the girls of Africa. Tell us about it. Um. Whew, um. So let me go back a little bit um, and tell you how this came about. So. When I was doing my journey, uh, I've, firstly, I've been involved with women's organizations for a very long time. Um, and I'm very passionate about the equality of women and, um, and all those sorts of things. And when I, was tra when I knew that I was going to be going through Africa, I started to feel like I wanted to have a purpose behind my journey that wasn't just about me driving home. And... I started to research um, the, the condition and the state of women in Africa as, as it is now, because obviously I hadn't really paid much attention to it when I was living in Europe. And the statistics were um, horrifying. <laughs> I can't put it any other way. So the information that I came up with and the statistics I came up with were, were really alarming. And I thought to myself, wow, um, I want to focus on, on this. But the other thing is, is that in Africa, you can literally spend money on, or send money or, or support charities in, in anything and everything. There's, you know, the, everything is needed here, everything. Um, but I wanted to, I was looking further. I was looking further and saying, what can we do in Africa that will actually really make a difference? that will actually start to, to change this um, uh, constant handout sort of situation that we have in Africa. And my research showed me that if you educate girls, you improve the, one, of the, one of the side effects, only one, but one of the side effects of educating girls is that you improve the socioeconomic conditions of a country. We only need in Africa to do one thing. <laughs> really, we only need to do one thing. We need to educate girls with the highest priority and get as many girls into education as we possibly can. The statistics around the number of girls that are not in education in Africa is horrifying. I mean, I drove through Africa. I, I always say, that when I was driving through Africa, girls, women and girls had two occupations. One was carrying water because they, and they had to do that every single day. Because remember, I was driving through lots of rural Africa and even in the cities, they were carrying water around. And the second one was pregnancy and having babies, but they can only do that every nine months. And that was, that's the horrifying fact is girls are uneducated, have, are, are condemned to a life of poverty. So to go back, I started to get all this information and I was like, wow, actually, if we just did one thing and educated girls, we could literally change not only my country, but our continent. Um, so I looked around for organizations that I felt I would be prepared to raise funds for and, and support this cause. Um, I didn't find any organization that specifically was doing what I'm focused on. 
I also didn't find any organization that I felt I wanted to raise enough funds for for the CEO to drive a B, the latest model BMW or Mercedes Benz. And I also didn't want to, I didn't like the values of a lot of the organizations. Um, great work they do and, and, and whatever have you, but I just have a very strong belief in supporting grassroots initiatives in Africa. And there are plenty, plenty. Um, so uh, as, as somebody in Ghana once said, um, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of NGOs come from Europe. They come and they take photographs of, of poor villages and poor African people, and then they go back and they get the money, and most of the money goes to them, and only a little bit trickles down to the poor villages in Ghana, for example. And um, so I start, but I started an a, um, um, an ASBL, a nonprofit in Luxembourg, because I was living in Luxembourg and I was registered in Luxembourg at the time, and um, I. I wanted to start something and I thought if I start, if I wait until I've done my journey, it's just complicated. Plus money and finance and foreign exchange is complicated here. So I, I've started my organization in Luxembourg and I, it's just me and, and my board members and it's tiny. At this moment in time, I will not tell you that it's a big blah, 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 because it isn't. It's really small. But I have a great big vision for this. And, and I'm working on that since I've been back. Um, I'm, I've been plowing and plowing and plowing. I'm pumping and pumping. And as I say, you know, you've got to pump the pump before the water comes out. So I've been pumping. Today, I got a little trickle of water. I was like, whoa, I think maybe I'm on the right track here. So um, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot more pumping to do. But um, so, yes, yeah, so I started this small organization. And um, in case you ask me this question, I called it Kusasa because uh, Kusasa in the language where I come from, which is in Debele, which is from the Zulu, um, means tomorrow. And I very much believe that the education of girls is going to bring us a better tomorrow. And um, so that's why I call it Kusasa. I like it. I love the name. I love the simplicity of what it means. Tomorrow, right? I think specifically yeah, translated to tomorrow. And, and it is about the future. It's about the future for these girls. And it is about the future of Africa, because as you're pointing out, that is, that is a way you can change Africa and, and change the needs and help to meet the needs by um, going straight to, to the young women and the girls and, and helping them get a better start and, a, and, a, and, and the aspect or looking forward to a better future. So yeah. as it is, all right, let's let's take Kusasa out of out of the picture. The average okay. young lady in Zimbabwe, right? In your hometown, in your area there, what yeah. what does their education look like without an organization like Kusasa coming in to help them? What what is what's their school years gonna well, be? What are they gonna be? Okay. Um well we have obviously got in Zimbabwe, we have a middle class and an upper class and, and they are African people. Um, so the girls that are born into those families will have uh, private education or, or go to a government school and, and get a solid foundation in education. Um, my focus is on the girls that don't have those opportunities. So I focus mainly on rural girls because they're generally um, come from poorer households. Um, they live in mud huts and uh, live very simple, basic lives. Um, a lot of them are disadvantaged or, or what we call vulnerable. Um, and I focus on those girls. But I also focus on high achieving girls. Now, if, those, if, if any of the girls in the rural areas do not get the opportunity to go to high school, and because of our... Um, Last month, 700% inflation. Um, there are parents that just, with added added to that COVID, there are parents who just cannot afford to educate their girls. And we have a tradition and culture here of, because of gender inequality on top of all of this, um, boys get preferential treatment because it's known that the boys will get better opportunities for jobs and get better pay for jobs. So boys will go be sent to school rather than girls. Um, so we, we, we have that struggle as well. But if girls do not make it into high school, and um, there was after the crash in 2008, 
uh, which also affected Zimbabwe. Um, by 2011, 67% of girls were not in high school. And that's just an unacceptable figure. Um, so, and we, we anticipate that while there has been some gain uh, over the last number of years, that the, the current situation is just going to um, give us really bad figures again. Um, so if a girl does not get into high school, she will be subjected to a life of poverty. That's the, that's the bottom line. She will, she will either, if she manages to escape early marriage, if she manages to escape having to turn to prostitution, being trafficked, or any of the other terrible things that happen to these girls, uh, and trust me, you don't even want to know how hard life is for them. They will live lives of poverty. So if they manage to escape all those other things, what are the, you know, who's going to employ them? They're lucky if they can get domestic work. Um, and even a lot of people can't employ domestic staff here at the moment because, of course, we've got all sorts of um, financial situations. So uh, life is hard. <laughs> if you have no education, there is no there there is no way but or down um, and that's it and they will live in rural areas and they will uh, if they're lucky they will have a good husband if they're unlucky they won't. Um, so how do you select the the students, the young girls that you're able to help? I mean, obviously you've got to focus your attention and your resources probably, especially since you're the you're this is early as you build up this organization, how are you choosing yeah. the ones to help and how so, are you helping them? <laughs> okay. So um, I currently, um, I have three girls, um, two of them um, I had since last year and I got those through networking. So uh, in fact, um, I'm doing a lot of networking at the moment with people in rural areas and members of parliament in rural areas um, talking about looking for the kinds of girls that I'm, go I, I'm, I'm trying to attract. And, and the girls that I'm I, I want are high achieving or talented in whatever way, shape or form that is, but high achieving or talented girls who won't, if, if it wasn't for Kusasa, would not have the opportunity to go to high school. And the reason, so I, I get challenged on this a lot. So I get challenged on um, why high achieving girls, why can't you help all girls? Well, because my fund at the moment is teeny weeny. If I could educate all the girls in, in the whole of Africa, I would absolutely without hesitation and doubt do that. But I can't. And <clears throat> so I have these two girls that specifically that I'm, I'm going to talk about um, because I've only taken on the other one um, this year. But these two girls, I are from a rural area and that way, <laughs> not far away. Well, in the bush, living very basic, simple lives. Uh, you know, they sleep on a floor, on the floor in a mattress in a, in a moat hut and uh, no electricity, no running water. They have to carry water, um, those sorts of things. So, if they didn't have the opportunity to go to high school, these very highly intelligent girls would be what? You know, they would be doing nothing. You know, they would be nothing. So I specifically select those because I consider those, if I can say, the low-hanging fruit. They're the girls who really want education. Um, they really want to learn. They really want to progress. Um, both my girls... Both of these girls want to become doctors and the other girl I have wants to become a vet. So um, I, I, I choose those girls and I help them. So the two girls that I have, I could probably have more girls if it wasn't for the fact that these two girls have to have to have come into school to a school here in the city, which um, gives a much better standard of education than they could get in the rural area. And I have them as boarders. So boarding these girls is quite expensive and um, I pay for everything. So I pay because it would be unfair to say to them, yes, you can come to school and you can be a boarder, 
Um, but you have to some way find the money to become a boarder or for your uniforms and your books and, and your food and everything else. So um, I take on the burden of all of that because I specifically want my girls to not feel like they're charity cases. I want them to fe- to be con- to, to do, develop and grow as confident young women who believe that they deserve a place at the table. Um, and that's very important to me. So I pay for their uniforms, their school books, their um, their lessons. At the moment, I'm paying for additional tuition. Uh, my girls are so keen that they actually sought out during COVID a teacher, a, a, um, a tutor in their area. And he's teaching them science and maths. And um, they were going to be walking 10 kilometers a day. Um, and I managed to raise funds and got a donor for bicycles for them so that they could actually cycle. Um, and, and one of the girls had to learn how to bicycle. Her father had to teach her because she's never, although she's 14 now, she never ridden a bicycle in her life. So um, so that's what I do. And, and I network extensively. And I'm hoping very much that I have a, some plans in place. Those are my two girls with their bicycles. And Pulling, um, up, pulling up the picture here. Of course. Company- yeah, of course, for, for those that are uh, listening to the audio version of the podcast, this is that section of the show where I like to pull up actual pictures or sometimes video from these locations. And Dot Becker with Kusasa is joining us today from Zimbabwe. She's on the line from Zimbabwe right now. And we're learning all about Kusasa and her heart and how she helps these girls and how much she loves these girls. So what is on the screen now? Dot is what? I see a picture. I see. Um, There's my two girls with their two brand new bicycles, which they were very shocked because they, they've they never had bicycles in their life before. And they, you know, brand new bicycles, just unheard of. Yeah. Um, but a lady managed to organize those for me. And um, then a company here in, in Zimbabwe called United Refineries very kindly donated some food for them as well and sanitary pads and, and those sorts of things, which is something that of course girls need. Um, another problem that girls have to fra- face here is, is um, a lack and a shortage, shortage or av- availability of sanitary pads. So they got little hampers as well as their bicycles. And I can say that they were very happy girls that day, as was I. <laughs> Pulling up another picture here. What are we looking at here? So this is Sipu Sisu. Um, she is um, a very bright young woman. And she, last year, she won the award for, for her, her year for, for science. Um, and she really has um, a very good brain um, and, and very determined young woman as well. All right. Another picture. Great picture here. This one's got you in it, Dot. Yes, that was when I returned, when I arrived back here um, and I got to meet them for the first time because I had been sponsoring them, but I hadn't met them. Um, So this was our first meeting, uh, which was brilliant. Uh, One of my first stops was to go and and see them. You can look Kusasa up online. I'm looking again, I'm uh, kind of perusing the Instagram account, which is... uh, at kusasa.africa. So you definitely want to follow them and look at these beautiful faces here. Okay, let's see. Is this, who are these two young Well, this ladies? was last year when they first went to, to high school um, and they, they look so much, they look like really like babies there in comparison to the way they look now. They've, they've grown so much in the last year. Um, it's amazing, yeah. Well, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see them and you can definitely see this uh, even then, and I know that was a, a year or so back, but um, there's a certain light in their eyes and sparkle right on their face. They know they're they loved. Are, I can tell they were excited yeah. about the year ahead. How does, I, mean, I know we're looking at this from a lot of different angles, but how did the, how are the girls reacting to this change in their life? Because thanks to you and the people that help you, Dot, you are able to help them and to see their lives changed. How did they react to that? Well, firstly, you know, I, I, I put all the effort in and, and really 
amazing people and, and wonderful friends that I have who, who help and support me to, to do this work, really. Um, and the girls, it's, it's, it's hard to describe what a game changer it is for, for girls like this to have the opportunity to get education. To them, it, it's it's they're constantly grateful. They constantly tell me how much how much they appreciate it, um, and it's it's really an it's an honor for me to be able to. I, I always said when I set out doing this, I said um, I have no great ambition. I do now, but <laughs> at that time, I didn't have any great ambition. I was like, if I can just change the world for one girl, one girl, I know that I will, you know that that will really change the world for her and um if i can help her and and just just one girl and i'm very fortunate at the moment i too um, as i said i have very ambitious plans that next year i might have a whole lot more uh if if other bits and pieces come together so then let's talk about what you need to be a little more ambitious how can people help? You need help. That's what you need. Um, you've got the well, vision. You've got the plan. Yeah, yeah, and but yeah. how do you how do you take it to the next level? What what's what's the kind of help? Well, that you I need? have. I, I I'll I'll share with you what, what my vision is. Um, I I've come to understand that it's not enough to give them education. What I need to do is I need to give them life skills. So I need to merge the education with life skills because there are still, when I, not my girls, <laughs> hopefully, but there are still way too many girls getting pregnant and um, because they still can't see that education will change the world for them. They still can't see the opportunities that it can create for them. So I, I'm developing a life skills program at the moment. I have I have no children, firstly. I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing, but I know what is needed. And so I'm working with people to, to try to um, put this together uh, as, as best I can because a, a very important element for me as well is to merge into this, um, <coughs> sorry, African culture, um, and African history, and I want them to to have a good good um, foundation in their culture and in their in their history, which um, they don't have. Um, shockingly, so I'm I'm, I'm I'm working on this life skills program, but I'm also working on a project whereby there are hostels, school hostels here that are empty. That means all the girls that would potentially be in those hostels aren't in those hostels because nobody can afford to educate them. And I want, I, I'm appealing at the moment and I've put in a pro proposal to the government to say, lease me the building. I will upgrade it. For the number of years that I have it, I will pump girls into that and be able to manage their time and their day and, and implement the life skills program, make sure that they're educated, make sure that they're prepared and, you know, confident young women. That's what I said. I want confident, good, strong young women who are going out there and who are going to be leaders as well as I, I have a very strong thing about that I already talked to them about is whatever happens to you, you must reach down and pull up your sisters. You must pull up your the other girls in our community. Um, so I'm I'm working on this hostel project because if I can get that hostel project, then I have a place to accommodate them because I don't believe that the government is very efficient. I mean, you know, like governments everywhere in the world, the the government schools are very efficient in the way that they run um, a hostel. If I dare say so, <laughs> probably be lambasted for that by the government. Hopefully nobody from the government here will listen to <laughs> But so that's my ambition. Um, but, of course, no matter how many girls I, if I can accommodate, I still need to feed them. I still need to educate them. I still need to pay for education. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of – it's like my journey. You know, I have – I keep moving forward with the with absolute certainty – 
that the universe will figure out how it's going to happen. I'm just going to keep moving forward and, and doing what I need to do, and somehow it'll work out. Talking today with Dot Becker. She is the founder and president of Kusasa. Now, she did warn me she doesn't like titles, so maybe she doesn't think of herself <laughs> that way. But she is. She is the founder. She is the president. And she does absolutely need the help of people around the world who feel a particular calling or connection to this project, which is why we do these things. I like to tell these stories, and I want to connect people who need the help with people who have the opportunity to help. So I'd like you to reach out to them. If you, you know, you feel a special connection with this project, um, reach out to Kusasa yeah. and I'm, talk I'm to, and talk to, yes, yeah, she, she uh, would love to have your involvement. But again, www.kusasa.africa and Kusasa, right? Again, those who can't see the screen, this is K U S A S A. Just like it sounds, Kusasa with a K, Kusasa.Africa. And uh, always great to have Dot on the show. She's so much fun. Uh, Dot, what was the moment in time when you, um, you knew you had to do something? You knew you had to do something or you caught the vision for this. What was, what was that point in time? What was it that kind of pushed you past that edge? I, I I think when I look back, uh, I sort of feel like many pieces of my life have been kind of moving me towards what I'm doing now. And every bit of information that I've picked up along the way, every bit of knowledge that I've picked up along the way. Um, but when I was researching my trip and I, I, I came across the staggering statistics of, of poverty um, for women in Africa. Um, you know, sort of, uh, if, I re if I recall the statistics, 64% of women in Africa live in poverty and many of those live in abject poverty. And education is the one thing that can change that. Education is also the one thing that reduces teenage pregnancies, reduces uh, child and maternal mortality. It improves community health. It improves um, the, the socioeconomic conditions of the country. It increases the GDP. There is not one single reason. And when I came to that information, that there is not one single reason why we should not be making it the highest priority, I was like, I've got to do something about this. I've got to do something about it. I've got to lend my voice to this. I've got to, I've got to take action. I've got to do something. Because to me, it just seems... Um, it's wrong. It's just wrong. We, as women, we are 50% of the, uh, more or less, 50% of this world. We are almost, we, 50% of Africa. It varies slightly country by country, but we are 50% of Africa. To merely think that the greatest, one of the greatest resources of Africa is completely underutilized was just mind boggling to me. You know, so um, I just, I just felt passionately about that. And I just was like, and I, because, you know, Adam, I'm a very passionate person about all sorts of things. Um, I was just like, I can't, I can't then sit on my hands. You know, when, I, when I'm captured by an idea and a concept and I had the facts and information to back it up, I was like, okay, so I'm off. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I have no idea how. I have no experience in this. I have no, but I'm passionate about the fact that girls must be educated. Wait, and that's actually the point that I like to get to when I talk to somebody like you who obviously came to a point where you knew you had to do something and then you faced a decision, you you could have chosen to look the other way. Sure. But you didn't. You chose to uh, push out it to perhaps into the unknown uh, and you had to be brave and take on these new challenges. And knowing you, I'm thinking it probably didn't take you too long to decide to do this. But was there any point at which you said, I don't know, when, you know, when you're counting the cost and you think, I don't know if, if I can do it or if it'll be worth it or if I, was there any point at which you hesitated? And it's okay. The answer can be yes, by the way, doesn't <laughs> make you a bad person. But um, 
Uh, not really. Does that make me strange? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, but that's kind of the one part of the <laughs> Well, because I didn't go into this going, I'm going to change the world. I'm I'm going to, you know, build a million, billion, whatever, you know, organization. Uh, I went in this into this with the concept and the idea that I might be able to change the world for a girl. If if it was more than a girl, great. But I, I, you know, I just, I ate the elephant. You know, I've spoken to you this about this before. You know, it's huge. The task of educating girls in Africa is enormous. I, even when I was driving through Africa and I was telling people in other African countries, and mainly men, actually, and I was saying, you know, talking to them about how education of girls and blah, 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 they'd be like, can't you start this organization here as well? I'd be like, mm, no. <laughs> I'm going to Zimbabwe. I'm going to be doing it there, you know. Um, I didn't want to conquer Africa. I, I'd love to be able to, but I, I just felt that if I could just capture one girl and change the world for her, if I could just improve one girl's life and save her from early pregnancy and early teenage, early marriage or, or a life of poverty, wow, that's worth it. And, and so I kept my my concept kind of small and um, and achievable. I ate the elephant. I was just like, this is the first chunk. Now that I got here, I'm you know I started to take other chunks. But my my ambition was small, and so I didn't overwhelm myself and say, oh my god, what am I getting myself? I I do now go, oh, this is all too much. <laughs> but you know what? The universe will work it out. So just just. Leave it there, and it'll, somehow it'll work itself out. And somehow it does. You know, I somehow in between traveling and getting here and doing this, and I've still been able to pay their fees. I've raised enough money. Every now and then, somebody loves what I'm doing and send, you know, because they can donate on the website, and I get like money. I'm like, oh, like a month. There's money for the girls. I can do. I can get them bicycles. I can get them books. I can get them, you know, whatever. And that's exciting for me. And every single time somebody drops something into into the box, sort of thing. I know that I can take on, you know, for me, it's about, I now have another little girl. I have another little project. Um, let's see how we can, I can build on that and, and you know, bite-sized chunks, eating elephant. <laughs> Speaking of the website, went ahead and pulled the website up here. You can find it at www.kusasa.africa. Again, that is K-U-S-A-S-A dot -S -S Africa. Africa. Looking at the beautiful website here, Educating Girls, clearly the theme. Um, you've done a great job. I don't know who did your website, but this looks great. The logo is amazing. Concept is amazing. The execution is, is beautiful. And I don't spend there, enough time on it. <laughs> it, it. These things can take time. They can. <laughs> So whether it's they you do. or somebody who's helping you, it they have uh, you and your team have done. A I built the website. Hey, I you built did? the website. Okay, well then I'm going to call you next. Now you're now you're in trouble because when I need help, I'm calling you. That's what we're doing. Um, you got it. Yeah, I would love for anybody watching this, uh, if you want to help out in some way, again, show her that you love what she's doing. You appreciate her. Give what you can. If it's you know you're the kind of person that got any amount of help. Yeah. Any amount of help. Help help her out. And you know, if nothing else, you need to reach out to her and, and encourage her and and just join sort of my Facebook page, join my Instagram. Um, yeah, just you know, stay connected. Or you know, if you've got any questions, ask me, write to me. Um, you know, either by contacting me on the website or messaging me through um Facebook or Instagram, whatever. Yeah. Well, it is a wonderful work. You're a wonderful person. Love to talk to you all the time. Again, when, Adam. When, when we, <laughs> when we talk, will get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's sundowner time over there. I remember that from our last oh, call. Oh, it is. I, I'm not, I bet, we're talking about children, so I better not show anything. Okay. <laughs> true, true. But enjoy your afternoon. Enjoy your evening. Thanks. Thanks so much for Thank taking you. the time. You know, I, I, I was fascinated by your story. Um uh, the story of going home to Africa, really, that's really, I think what initially pulled me in. And that's kind of how I got to know you is through that. And then because of that, and I know you're writing a book and that's going to be coming out soon. 
Um, given all of those things, then when I discovered she's got this heart that um, really <laughs> is for the people of Africa and these young girls, oh, I love them. and yeah. it is such an inspiring story. I love it. Um, Dot, uh, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for doing what you do. We'll get an update in the future. In the meantime, I just encourage everybody right. to log on and pull the website up one last time www.kusasa.africa, www.kusasa.africa. Uh, get to know more, find out more, and sign up to help in some way. Dot Becker joining us today from Zimbabwe, our guest on the Edge of Adventure podcast. Dot, thank you so much. Always love talking to you. And we'll talk love again. Love talking soon. to you. Thank you, Adam. Always a pleasure to see you. God bless you. We'll be in touch. And this has been another edition of the Edge of Adventure podcast. <laughs>